Acts 20. And today, we shall be talking about ministry with a clean conscience. Amen. Doing ministry with a clean what? A clean conscience. I'm a conscious. Acts chapter 20, we are reading from verses 18. And the Bible says this. Let's start from verse 17. From Melitus, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, You know how I lived the whole time I was with you. From the first day I came to the province of Asia, I served the Lord with great humility and with tears, although I was severely tested by the plots of the Jews. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Paul is now on his way back to Jerusalem. But he has to go through Antioch of Syria. He has been in Ephesus for three years doing ministry. But after those three years, he decided to make a visit to those other churches. And that is where he goes to those other areas in, in Asia. Uh, still testifying about the grace of God and the goodness of God. Strengthening the believers in those places. And he goes uh, up to Lyricum. And now he's now on his way back to Jer going to Jerusalem. Then he calls the elders of the church in Ephesus. And they travel all the way to meet with him. And when he meets with them, he begins now telling them how we are served. He gives a testimony of his service in Ephesus. He's is giving a testimony of what? Of his service. The guy has served for three years and now he's living and he knows very well. Because I'm a pokea neno Because ambalo linamwelezea kwamba mbele unakoenda kuna majaribu ama kuna matatizo mengi yanakusubiri na mateso mengi so in his heart he was seeing even the possibility of going to die where he was going Nona. so he calls these people to bid them farewell and he narrates how he has served with them and he tells them how he, he lived among them he tells them how he was an example to them he tells them how he kept back nothing. And he tells them how he served or how he was preaching, going from house to house. He preached in public, but also he preached going houses to houses. You know, in that setup we had in those years, there were no churches like these ones. No, no. The only places of worship were maybe synagogues or the temple of Diana. Those are the areas of worship or other shrines. So there were no churches. So the only place people could meet for fellowship was maybe in the school of Tyrannus where we saw Paul who was there for two years teaching or they could meet in houses, in house fair fellowships. And we believe these elders were not just the board of elders. Apana, these were pastors of house fellowships. These were people whom we had appointed to be pastors of what? Of house fellowship, or my home fellowships or cell groups. So he, he calls them and he gives them his last word as he's leaving, going back to Jerusalem. And he knows very well that he may not find the opportunity of coming back to them again. So he, he tells them how he has, he has lived among them, how he served with them, how he moved from house to house, how he was an example to them. And then he says this in verses, uh, in verses 22. He says this. And now compelled by the spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of 
of God's grace. Praise the Lord. So when Paul was doing ministry, Paul understood he had a race which he was running. He knew he had a task or he had a, an assignment. And I believe when a believer knows their assignment, then life finds meaning. Life finds what? Meaning. Because you know you have a task to accomplish. You know you are here for a purpose. You know you have something to deliver. Praise the Lord. But when somebody has no assignment, or somebody has no race that is running, or somebody has no goal, then anything you achieve to you is okay. Even if you get an E, or you get a D minus, it's okay. Why? Because you are aiming at nothing. There was nothing you are aiming at. But if somebody has an assignment in life, he knows God has called me for this, and he knows I have to deliver this, and he knows time also is limited, I am growing old, then he has to devote his energy, he has to devote his resources, he has to devote his time, he has to devote his, uh, his thinking and everything to make sure he accomplishes the task. So, Paul is telling us here that I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, and I say, however, hata ivyo, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. He considers his life not worthy. Not worthy to me if only I may finish the race. Hello? If only he may do what? It's just like a suicide bomber. He has a target. He wants to make sure he kills as many people as he wants. Then he takes a, a, I mean a, a belt vest. He ties in his body. That man does not consider his own life. He considers what? Accomplishing what he wants to accomplish. It doesn't matter whether he dies. And even there is no pieces of his body. There is no pieces What he cares is to make sure I may woo as many people as possible. That was the mind of Paul. That he does not consider his own life. He considers the call more than his life. The call was too bigger than his own life. Hello? The call was bigger than his own pleasure. The call was bigger than anything else he could devote his money or resources to. That is why he doesn't, he doesn't even fear death as long as he accomplishes what he knows he was called for. Bonus if you will. And those are the people we need this day. We need a people who know they are calling and who are willing to do anything to make sure that call is, uh, is what? Is achieved. Or that call is delivered. They are willing to do everything in their power to make sure they accomplish the assignment granted to them. So the first thing you need to do is to know if you have an assignment. And where is that assignment? And then know how shall you fulfill the assignment. And then the assignment now begins driving you. You come to a place where it is now the assignment that is now driving you. You don't do things because it is convenient. You do things because of the assignment that you have. When you, you have to go somewhere, you don't go because everybody is going. You ask yourself, is it compatible with the assignment which I have. Everybody is looking for a visa to go to America and relocate to America because there is good life in the West. Then you ask yourself, is it compatible? Is it what God has called me to do? Or I just have to go because everybody is going. I have to relocate because people are now going. So let us also, is it compatible with your call? Is it what God has called you for? Is it in line with the assignment which God has laid in you? Praise the Lord. 
Those are things somebody has to consider if he has to finish the race. So you have to understand you have a race. Hallelujah. In 2022, let your focus be on the race which God has called you for. Hallelujah. Let your focus be on the race which God has laid ahead of you. And ask yourself, am I on the path of running this race and achieving what God wants me to achieve? Am I on the right path of delivering what God has called me to deliver? Hallelujah. So he says, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. And he says, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. So he knew his task and he knew exactly what it was and it was testifying of the gospel of God's grace. That was Paul's assignment because God raised Paul specifically to bring this message of God's grace which the apostles never grasped. They walked with Jesus for three and a half years but they ended up embracing the law system rather than the grace which came by Jesus. They were embracing the law which came by Moses rather than the grace which came by Jesus. That Paul at instances, he had to rebuke even their leaders because of bringing the gospel of the law in the congregation where grace was prevailing. Hallelujah. So he understood his assignment was basically to deliver the message of God's grace. How through Jesus Christ, we humanity have been accepted. We have been unconditionally received and unconditionally accepted Amen. by Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The law was only embracing people who could keep the law. But the grace of God was embracing every humankind who accepts the grace of God. The grace that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts and live uprightly, soberly in this present age. Why will await the appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ? Amen. Hallelujah. So this grace has appeared to all men. And that was Paul's assignment. He knew he had to deliver the message. And the message was God's grace. And that is why he went from city to city. He went from town to town. Sometimes he could be beaten, almost left for the dead. But he could still wake up, go back to the same, same city, and still deliver the gospel of God's grace. Because he knew he had the assignment to make sure he delivers the message of God's grace. So what is your assignment today? What are you living for? What is the rest you are running? Are you just passing time? Are you just going through motions and motions and motions, not knowing exactly what God has assigned for you? Praise the Lord. That is the first question we need to answer. What is the race you are running? Hallelujah. So he says he does not consider his life of any importance, but only to deliver what? His assignment. Amen. He does not consider his life dear to him so that he may finish his race. And that is to present the gospel of God's grace. Hallelujah. And this gospel is a gospel to him. It was a gospel worth dying for. Hallelujah. Not just a gospel. There are so many gospels being preached. Amen. But to him, this was a gospel worth dying for. It is something he was willing to stand with his life. He was willing to back it, to back it with his own life. Kama ni kufa, ni kotari kufa kwa jilia, what I'm saying. And there are very few people who can do that. <laughs> who can willing to die for what they believe. There are few people who can do that. They can be willing to die for the world they believe. This is a gospel worth dying for. It's a gospel which was worth dying for and is still worth dying for. It is worth giving your resources. It is worth giving your time. 
It is worth giving your energy. The gospel of God's grace. The gospel which speaks of how we have been accepted in the beloved. The gospel which testifies of how we have been forgiven in Christ Jesus. It testifies of how we have been embraced in Christ Jesus. The gospel which makes us righteous. Hallelujah. Which declares how righteous we have become in Christ Jesus. Not how sinful we are, but how righteous we have already become. Not how we shall be, but already we are. The gospel which speaks of who we are right now. As he is, so are we in this life. Hallelujah. That's a gospel worth committing your life for. And Paul found it worthy even to lay down his life because of this gospel. Because he saw the truth in it. He saw the value in this word. Bonus if you will. Hallelujah. Then he says this. Verse 25. Verse 25 says this. Now, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Bonus if you will. These are people they have walked together. They have lived together. They have done things together for three years plus. And now he tells them, you know, I may not see your faces again. He tells them, I won't, I'm not be able to see your faces again. Now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Hallelujah. Now, listen. When Paul was in Corinth, I mean in Ephesus, we have gone through what Luke tries to write about the encounter he had in Ephesus. We see the miracles which he was able to do. We are told that through his handkerchiefs, through Paul's handkerchiefs, the sick people were getting healed. Bonus if you will. We have been told that through his aprons, demons were being cast out. We have been told how Paul was able to change the entire city from the worship of Diana, the goddess. Diana, that image of that which they say fell from the moon. People were worshipping Diana. But now, people had been converted until they stopped buying those images of Diana. And the temple of Diana, which used to be, to be so much revered, was now becoming useless because it was now lacking worshippers who were going there. Even demons testified Paul we know. And Jesus we know. But he doesn't boast of all those things. He only says, I testified about the kingdom of God. The message of the kingdom is what matters a lot. The miracles, they only come to back the message. Which means if you grasp the agenda of the kingdom, then the rest will have to follow suit. Paul's assignment was to deliver the message of the, of the kingdom. That is why miracles and those signs and wonders were following him. Why? Because his assignment was one, to declare the kingdom message. To declare the kingdom of God. To preach the kingdom of God. That is what we've been called for. To declare the kingdom of God. We put that kingdom ahead of everything else. To declare the message of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We bless God. He says this. Verse 26. Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of all men. Innocent of the blood of all men. Why? For I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of the whole will of God. Amen. So, Paul knows his assignment. Paul knows this assignment is more important than anything else. Even more than my life. And he knows his assignment is to preach the message of God's grace and to declare about the kingdom of, of God. As you study the life of Paul, at this juncture, 
you discover there were similarities with the ministry of Jesus. When Jesus was also about to be crucified. And what we see, the same way, the way Jesus traveled to, to Jerusalem with a group of disciples, is the same, same way also Paul now here is traveling back to Jerusalem with a group of disciples or believers who had believed in the gospel. The same, same way Jesus was opposed by hostile Jews who plotted against him is the same, same way Paul also is opposed by who? By Jews who are plotting against him, who want to kill him. The same, same way Jesus prophesied or predicted his death three times in the Gospels. Paul in the same, same way he received prophecies three times concerning what? Concerning what was awaiting him in Jerusalem. Bonus few. The same, same way Jesus declared his, his readiness to lay down his life is the same, same way Paul also is declaring his readiness to lay what? Lay down his life. Hallelujah. The same, same way Jesus was determined to complete his ministry is the same, same way Paul also is committed to complete what? His ministry, his assignment in the same, same manner. The same, same way Jesus expressed his abandonment to the will of God. He said, let not my will be done, but yours. In the same, same way also, Paul expressed his abandonment to the will of God. He abandoned himself to what God will do with his life. So, we are seeing a, a similarity between the life of Paul at this point and the life of Jesus. And that is not only true of Paul and Jesus. It is true to any believer who wants to accomplish the assignment. They have to abandon themselves to the will of God. They will face opposition from their fellow brothers. People will speak bad against you. But you have to stick to the call of God which you know is in your life and the assignment that you have to deliver. That is true to every believer who has to accomplish God's assignment in their lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 26. He says this in, in Acts 20 and verse 26. He says this. Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of, of God. He says he is innocent of the blood of all men. Hallelujah. He says, therefore, his conscience was clear because he had given all the all he could he could give in his teaching, in his preaching, and in whatever he could do. He had delivered the whole counsel of God. And that is what is required of us. Ukijua umepatiwa assignment. Ukijua ukona mwito mashani mwako. Ukijua kuna watu ambao wako chini yako. If you know there are people you are you are leading in the Lord. Si lazima uwe pastor ndio uwe unaongoza watu. Hapana there are people you are discipling, maybe in school, maybe in college, or in your place of work, or wherever you are. There are people whom you are teaching, or who are looking after you. No, no. So, those people, you have a responsibility over their lives. No, no. And your responsibility is to declare to them the whole counsel of God's word. Not only a part of it. To declare the whole what? The whole counsel the whole counsel of God's word. And you can only say you are innocent of anyone's blood after you have shared with them the whole what? The whole counsel of God. But if you know you've been given an assignment but you've not been keen in delivering it, then you know you have not shared the whole counsel of, of God. And maybe those people may one day say, Atu kuambiwa hii, kuambiwa hii, so, what is saying, for two years, 
they were meeting in the school of who? Tyrannus. And they were meeting daily. 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 Maybe only except the day of the Sabbath. But they were meeting daily, 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 daily. And he was teaching them. And he told them about anything else he could teach them. Anything else he knew. That is why you, you find his writing with the Ephesus, Ephesian church, it was much more deep. Why? Because these were mature what? Mature believers. The content he had given them for two years, he knew it was enough to sustain them. Praise the Lord. The content he had given to them, he said there is nothing I withheld from you. I gave you the whole counsel of God. That is why, if you turn to the book of Revelation, when you find the letter addressed to the church in Ephesus, no, no. in fact, they are being commended for so many things. Why? Because these people had embraced the truth. The only thing they are being asked is that, remember the first love. Because they got so focused on the details until they forgot the first love. They forgot about the God who loved them first. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. They were almost becoming legalistic by obeying those things they were taught and they were forgetting about the first love which God delivered to them first. Hallelujah. And they were being asked, remember where you have fallen from and return to the first because it is him who loved you first. It is not you who loved him first. Bonus if you will. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. <clears throat> Return to the first love. So he says, he had given all he could. And if we don't declare the whole counsel of God, then we are guilty of the blood of men. Hallelujah. We are guilty of the blood of men. But also, if your pastor is declaring the counsel of God, like in Patikani, your pastor is innocent. <laughs> No, no. Because he's committed his teaching from chapter to chapter, verse to verse. Why? Because he wants to get the whole car. Like in Sahu Upatikani, so how is he guilty? No, no. Yeah, he is quite guilty. Because yeah, yeah, I'm a Jifiana Utoa Hio 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 Habari Kwa Utele. Like in went yo, how patika? How patikani. Which means for us also to be able to grasp and to receive the whole counsel of God then it depends on our availability. We have to avail ourselves. Hallelujah. To receive the whole counsel of God, we need to avail ourselves. Let's go to Jesus. <clears throat> 